narrow stance squats with the dumbbell very much like regular squats except that your feet are going to be much closer together so think hip width apart or even closer you can have your feet all the way together in the narrow stance squat this is going to force you to work on the inside part of the front thigh right or the vmo and that's the kind of the knobby little thing when you sit down on your knee that sticks out pretty awesome looking muscle there and so to focus on that you bring those feet a little bit closer together and you're going to go down into the squat position because your feet are closer together it's easier to get off balance and have when your hips go down and back you may need to compensate by bending forward just a little bit more or you could bring the dumbbell weight a little bit further forward to counterbalance the hips coming down and back with the dumbbell bent over row you're going to be hinging at the hips think driving your hips back abs nice and engaged shoulders down and back squeeze the scapula together and then you're rowing the dumbbells with your elbows to your side and think about bringing the dumbbells back towards your hips so just outside of your hips and back towards your hips that's going to highly incorporate the lats and upper back muscles in the bent over row so with the back step lunge, we're basically doing a forward lunge, but we're changing the direction of movement. In changing the direction of movement, as I do the back step lunge, I'm actually dropping a little bit more weight into that forward remaining foot's heel. What that's gonna do is gonna help incorporate my hamstrings and my glutes into this back step lunge position. And then it will be exactly the same as a forward stepping lunge or a stepping lunge when I come back up out of that lunge position. So the single clean and jerk is very similar to the single clean and press, except that the press, you're using mainly your shoulders and triceps to drive that dumbbell weight up and overhead. In the jerk, it's primarily your hip hinge and your upward movement in your squat that's driving the weight of that dumbbell up and then you're gonna actually drop your hips down to catch the dumbbell in that top overhead extended position. So you, if you look at the single clean and press comparative to the single clean and jerk, you will see a big difference in what my hips are doing and what my hands are doing in that movement. With the dumbbell shrugs, the dumbbells are hanging at your sides and then you're shrugging your shoulders up towards the sky. So typically you could put this in your neck, you can lift with your shoulders way too far forward or protracted, or you could lift with your shoulders way too far back or retracted. So you wanna try to keep the shoulders at a nice lateral position as you shrug all the way up. And I challenge you to try to do it without changing your face. With the seesaw floor press, you're doing a traditional floor press, but you're doing it in a seesaw type fashion. And what I mean by seesaw is the right hand is gonna be pressing up as the left hand is coming down. And then the left hand is pressing up as the right hand is coming down. Basically, if your arms and hands were a seesaw, they would be reciprocating the upward and downward movement. So as you're coming down on one side, you're coming up on the other and then vice versa. Typically you would use a, a seesaw to just change up a variation of the floor press for a little bit more dynamic engagement, as well as it helps you see any sort of asymmetries that are happening left and right. Maybe your left arm is stronger than your right or your right arm is stronger than your left. The seesaw is gonna help you see that as maybe the seesaw on the left is gonna go a little slower or it's gonna be a little bit less stable as the pressing on the right. Exactly how it sounds, exactly how it looks. You're in the plank position and while staying solidly in the plank position, you may need to widen your foot stance so you have a little bit more stability. You're gonna row that dumbbell up towards your hip. Just think about bringing your hands or your palms into your hip pockets. Keeping your elbows tight to your side, this is gonna incorporate much more lat engagement and also upper back engagement in that row position. Then you're gonna bring that weight back down and switch to the other side. With the lying tricep extension, it would be very much like a skull crusher type movement. Basically, you're lying on your back, pressing the dumbbells all the way up over your chest like you just finished a bench press with the dumbbells and then you're dropping or bending at the elbow dropping those dumbbells down towards your face obviously in a controlled fashion 
and then pressing them back up. It's a little bit easier to do it with a neutral grip and to have the dumbbells pressed together. It's a little bit harder to have the palms up towards the ceiling as you're doing the tricep extension with the dumbbells separated. The dumbbell seated calf raises, you're gonna prop the dumbbells up on your knees as you're in a seated position. If you wanna increase the range of motion, you can start with your feet, the balls of your feet and the toes up on a raised block or in a raised position or up on a curb or whatever you have available to increase the height of the ball of your feet and the toes. And then you're gonna drop the heels down as low as you can possibly go and then raise the heels up as high as you can possibly go. The seated calf raise is going to work specifically the soleus, which is the muscle that underlies the gastrocnemius, which are the two uh, heads of the calf on the outside of your calf. With the dumbbell deadlift, typically you're going to want to start with the dumbbells right on top of or right in front of your toes. They could be just outside your feet or just inside your feet, depending on if you want a wider stance or a narrower stance for your deadlift. And the wider and the narrower is just going to change the way your hamstrings or the back of the thigh are going to incorporate the engagement and the movement up out of the deadlift. With the deadlift, you can incorporate knee bend but you don't wanna turn it into a squat. You don't wanna bend your knees so much that it becomes a squat movement. It should be primarily a hamstring or back of the thigh and glute or butt engagement type movement. And keeping your abs engaged, your chest nice and proud, you're bringing those dumbbells up and keeping the dumbbells in front of the thighs at the top part of the movement and then bringing the dumbbells back down. You don't necessarily have to have the dumbbells touch the ground for it to be a complete rep. It's whatever your functional range of motion is. With the dumbbell bent over reverse flies, obviously starting in that hinge down position or that bent over position. So it's important to keep your abs nice and engaged, your upper back nice and engaged, shoulders down and back. This is gonna protect your low back from having undue strain on it. As long as you can have a good stable bent over position, then you're gonna do the reverse flies. And reverse flies are basically the opposite of pec flies. Your elbows are slightly bent, and you're bringing those dumbbells from that hang down position outward and up to engage all of your upper back musculature. With the alternating forward lunge with the dumbbells, the dumbbells are typically gonna be carried on your side. You can also carry them in a front rack position or adjust how you're holding the dumbbells, but typically it's gonna be held at your side like a suitcase carrier, farmer's carry. And then you're alternating your forward lunge. So think about all the fundamentals of a forward lunge. You're keeping your abs engaged. You're staying nice and tall, nice and proud through the chest, shoulders down and back. You're loading 80% of the load into your stepping foot. And then 80% of that load is being loaded into your heel while 20% is being loaded onto the balls of the feet. And then you're not going so deep and so far forward in your lunge that you can't come back up out of the lunge. You should be able to step back out of the lunge in one swift movement as opposed to a stutter step type movement back into that standing position. The right knee is up and the right hand is gonna be loaded. Then you're gonna press, rotate, prop up onto the elbow, go from elbow to hand, and then you're gonna lift up your hips. You're gonna swing that leg underneath your hips, and then you're gonna drive up from that lunge position with that weight up overhead. Think about looking at the dumbbell the entire time. This is gonna help you balance and keep that dumbbell in line with the line of gravity and in line with your body. To get down from the Turkish get up, you're basically reversing all of that movement. So with the pec flies, whether you're on the floor or on a bench, it's the same movement because unlike the floor press, you're not gonna be touching your elbow to the ground. Now, obviously with the bench, you can go a little bit further out in your flies because you can bring those elbows a little bit further down, but just be careful that you don't go too far where the shoulder becomes uncontrolled and you create undue strain for the pec or undue strain for the shoulder. So in this, you're starting in a neutral grip, palms facing towards each other, dumbbells together in the overhead press position as you're lying down on the floor or on a bench. And then you're bringing those dumbbells apart from each other, keeping a slight bend in your elbows. As you bring it out, you should really feel this in your chest or pec muscles. With a dumbbell core twist, you can either use two dumbbells and kind of keep them together, or you can use a single dumbbell and grab each side of the bells and you're doing a core twist. So typically you're in a seated position, heels, slightly on the ground or your heels can even be up off the ground to create more stability 
and really incorporate ab engagement, you can keep your heels on the ground and really focus on leaning back further. And the further you lean back, the more it's going to engage your core and the more you're going to feel that engagement as you rotate to the left and the right. What you want to steer away from is over rotating or rotating with too much speed as it can put your spine in an undue rotational position. You want to have full control over the movement, the entirety of the rep. The double dumbbell sit up to press is incorporating both dumbbells in your hand. So you're starting in a floor press like position, then you're going to crunch into a roll up into a sit up. And then once you're in that seated and upright position, you're going to press those dumbbells overhead. Then you're going to bring those dumbbells back down and then roll back down into that floor press position. The dumbbell curls might possibly be the most seen movement in gyms around the world. Basically, you're creating bicep engagement and focusing on the bicep muscle by standing up. Your palms are going to be facing out, arms down at your side with the dumbbells in hand, and then you're curling up, trying to keep the elbows tight to your side so the elbows aren't moving forward and back and the elbows aren't moving outward as you curl up bringing that hand all the way as high as you can towards your shoulders and then lowering it back down to the starting position. The dumbbell farmer carries might be the simplest and most effective way to use the dumbbells. It's going to load your entire body. You're going to hold those dumbbells on the lateral parts of your body, hanging down, keeping your chest nice and proud, shoulders down and back, abs engaged, and then you're just walking forward. You could even walk backward, you could walk laterally, and you could walk in circles or figure eights. But you're going to be carrying those dumbbells in a farmer carry style position. The alternating dumbbell cleans is almost like an alternating curl, except it's the lower body that's actually creating the vertical or upward acceleration for the dumbbells. And then I'm as that dumbbell on one side is coming up, I'm bringing my elbows down and under that dumbbell to then carry that load in a front squat or front loaded like position. And then immediately I'm alternating that movement. So as the one side dumbbell is coming down, the other side dumbbell is coming up. So this will be a very uh, jumpy like position for your lower body where your lower body will be pumping up and down to create the accelerated needs for that vertical movement of the dumbbell. And then a lot is happening with the arms in terms of coordination to get under each of those dumbbells and have the dumbbells also going down at the same time. With the dumbbell front squat, you're gonna be loading the dumbbells up by your shoulders in front of your chest. You can either have the dumbbells touching together or you can keep the dumbbells separate and that will make it a little bit more difficult as you have to, it requires a little bit of stability and the top part of the hold for the dumbbells. And in that front loaded position, whether it's neutral grip, palms facing each other or palms forward or palms back towards your torso. Either one of those positions is correct. And each one of those positions can produce a certain effect, but I would just start with what's comfortable to you. You're gonna drop into a squat position and follow the normal squat protocol.